if I meet somebody for the comedy circuit that I know is great, I'll invite them up to do a wee bit, right? And it's kind of the gift I give myself. And I've, I've never really let anybody do it twice. And I've had lots of different comedians and things up here, but last night I had a truly great friend of mine and a truly great stand-up comic and poet called Angie Belcher. And she absolutely blew the window and the doors out, so I'd like to bring her back tonight because I'd just like you to see her, okay? So can you please welcome with love Miss Angie Belcher. I'm a midget. <laughs> or average height for a Scotsman. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming to this press conference. Martin Smith was brutally murdered on August the 1st in Edinburgh. We would now like to find any witnesses in order to catch the perpetrator of this brutal crime. Please welcome his wife, Mrs Smith. I'd like to thank the police for doing all they can to find the murderer of my man. I was really shocked by his disappearance. He just popped out by some toilet cleaners. <laughs> Martin was quite bullied at school. He was never that smart or cool. A loner, but he got five GCSEs. He didn't get one in P because he's got a gammon <laughs> Martin's major support came from his mum. Whereas I live with him every day, my god, he was a pain in the bum. Didn't like me seeing the girls, didn't like my friends from work. He spent a month trying to figure out my Facebook password. <laughs> the bills were always paid, the kettle was always repaired. The advantages of living with an obsessive is I know that he really cares. Oh. But he watched me leave in the morning. He knew the times of every bus home, accused me of sleeping with a postman, read my receipts and the texts on my phone. He said I did the washing up wrong, wanted to know my every thought, said I wore too much makeup and my skirt was too short. But he was mine. The man I chose to marry. That's the problem when you choose a partner at 19. You forget they're going to turn into a bald fat prat. My God, you get bored with the same conversation, the same position every night and that. My God, he was a wanker. A boring little man. He never made it to deputy head. It was crapped his job and disappointing in bed. <laughs> but the police have told me that if you do have any information, <laughs> <laughs> please call Crime Stoppers or the local police on 9772596. Seven, to be honest with you, I feel like I've been given my life back. <laughs> around my neck. I'm glad he's dead. Maybe now we can get the Midsummer Murders box set. <laughs> Without him sighing and saying, we don't really need it. God, he was such a controlling shit. <laughs> Sorry for that expletive. <laughs> and then tight arsed, soft dicked prick face. <laughs> don't worry about me. I'm sure I'll find somebody else. I mean, the mortgage won't get paid by it. So. Maybe I could let myself go party around a bit and reclaim my life. It is so good not to be somebody's wife. But if, if you do have an information <laughs> about who could have committed this dreadful act, do me a favour, buy him a pint and slap him on the back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name's Angie Belcher and um, I live in Bristol. And uh, there's a bit of a, a, a fracas at the moment in Bristol because the state school education system there is appalling, really bad, really bad. But um, my friends who've got children have realised uh, that the faith-based schools have really kudos and reputation. So my mates are now currently trying to pretend to be religions that they are not. How <laughs> it's going on in other places as well. Check out your local church on a Sunday. Queues of women lining up to suck off the vicar. <laughs> and I find it a bit difficult because um, if I had to pretend to be a certain religion to get into my kids into a certain school, what would I choose, I hope? Because uh, I'm an agnostic, so I'm not really sure really whether God exists or not. And this brings a set of its own problems. For example, I've got absolutely nothing to scream when I orgasm. <laughs> but 
Oh. Oh. I don't know. Oh. I'm not really sure. Yes. Why do little babies die? Why do men have nipples? I just. I'm not really certain about the existence of a deity or any other supernatural being that may. When I like it quite rough. <laughs> anyway, so, um, that's why I'm single. Quite aggressive. Uh, I wanted to give you a little poem about my ex boyfriend, if that's okay. Um, it's called Dave. <laughs> that's not his name. <laughs> the identity has been changed to protect the guilty. <laughs> Because nothing rhymes with Tarquin. It's <laughs> <laughs> quite an emotional kind of. <laughs> I woke up one morning to see the soft sunlight streaming through my bedroom window, hitting my eyes to awaken me to another anything could happen Sunday morning. And I thought, I hate Dave. <laughs> And I felt the anger and the fury of the boiling bubbles of water. And I thought, I hate days. <laughs> I took the cold, hard, evil milk out of the fridge. And I thought, I hate Dave. <laughs> I looked down at the swirling cocoa pops of doom swimming in my cereal bowl. And I thought, I hate cocoa pops. <laughs> I looked down at the sweet yet pitiful face of my cat, Timmy. Who is now dead. <laughs> and I thought, I hate Dave, and I heard the fervent and repetitive words from the mouth of my counsellor telling me to move on with my life. And all day I just thought, Dave, and I hate him, I hate him, I hate Dave. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I work as a stand up poet, and I recently supported John Headley. Does anyone know John Headley? Yeah. It's great. And I got my picture in all the papers, which is lovely. But I want to tell you a little bit of a story about what happens sometimes when people recognise you in strange places, because some of these newspapers turned up my local doctors. <laughs> so I went to the doctors uh, to have an IUD inserted. Some of you might know what that is, in case you don't know. Uh, an IUD is a little piece of plastic about that big, constructed device that gets inserted into your cervix to stop you from having babies. IUD, very different from an IED. <laughs> That would be a very different show. <laughs> Hello, I'm Angie Belcher. <laughs> anyway, there I am, practically naked, on the table, legs akimbo. And the doctor says to me, um, right, so, Angie, I have to go and get a nurse to be present for this procedure. Is strange? There's some things you want an audience for, <laughs> some things you don't. I said, why is that? And she said, well, it's to protect you. It's to stop me being accused of professional malpractice, she says. And to make sure that you're, you're not abused in any way. Just to explain to you, this procedure involves my vaginal walls being clapped open. With the doctor's practically whole hand up where the sun doesn't shine. Tell me, how would I know if she was doing that abusively? <laughs> Maybe she could wiggle my cervix seductively. 
then again, how would the nurse know if she was doing that? Because mm. she'd have to be in there as well, and to be honest with you, there's only just about enough room for one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know, maybe she was enjoying it, maybe she'd say something like, you've got a great service. <laughs> <laughs> Really quite happy, really. <laughs> she must see loads of cervixes, and if she was a single minor, I'd be quite pleased. Uh, anyway, she was having none of it, so off she trots. She comes back and she said, Oh, we're really busy today, I'm afraid um, I couldn't get a nurse. So I've bought Edna, the admin assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Edna's really excited. <laughs> She's just looking forward to ten minutes away from her keyboard. She clocks me, she comes over to me on the table. And enthusiastically looks down at me and goes, All right, Ange, I saw your picture in the paper. <laughs> tell us a joke. <laughs> and only when I get asked to tell people a joke, I'm, I'm nursing a pint in a pub beer garden somewhere, never naked on my back with a strange woman's fingers inside of me. <laughs> Someone I know, fair enough, but normally we've swapped star signs, we've done dinner. <laughs> anyway, Edna's having none of it. She's going, Oh, come on, come on, come on. It'll help with a pain. Tell us a joke. So I said, all right then, I said, how many people does it take to insert an IUD? <laughs> she said, I don't know. How many people does it take to insert an IUD? And I said, one, you insensitive bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that was last week. <laughs> You've been marvellous. I've been Angie Belcher. Thanks for having me. Thank you.